Thanks for the opportunity to speak, folks. Um, I'm going to speak today around a, a study called the Protect Study that um, I've been working on with my colleague uh, Geraldine Hennessy and Flux Learning Limited. Um, so this is a, it uses a methodology called proficiency-based progression, and that's what the first uh, screen you see here is where you develop metrics, steps, errors and critical errors for a procedure. You undertake an online course with knowledge acquisition. You undertake psychomotor skill acquisition where you practice the task and receive feedback in a real world setting. Then you actually perform it as part of your day to day activities and you receive feedback on it there, having to achieve a benchmark at stage two, three and four. And then afterwards, where you develop wisdom by receiving more experiential learning about deviations from the standard procedure that you've just learned, so to speak. So that is the methodology in a hyper condensed nutshell. And then we'll move on to here. Um, today's presentation that I'm giving is actually um, a presentation that was to be delivered by Geraldine, but in keeping with the pandemic and all things pandemic, she is unavailable, I'm afraid. Um, so the she would have been the she would have done a lot of the heavy lifting on this protect study course, I suppose. So effectively, what protect study see, uh, sought to address was the communication breakdown between healthcare workers that leads to significant patient harm. They want to remove the likelihood that if the doctors and nurses and the various allied health professionals on a ward are not speaking to each other, that the patient falls between the cracks. So as to address that particular problem. So it, the, it introduced this idea of a safety huddle. And the safety huddle is not a handover, but what it is, it's a brief multidisciplinary meeting that happens over about 15 minutes. Um where everyone discusses the patients, identify patients at risk, discuss in an open environment what are the needs of the patients for that particular day, that week, etc. The idea being that you identify the patients at risk sooner and you can intervene better, faster. So again, the benefits of the safety hurdle were to reduce harm and to improve care. So a timeline for the project, and I think back and I should probably play something like Spring by Grieg or something when I was agreed to do this project around 2020 and it was the summer and there was no lockdown and or it was 2019 the summer of and there was no pandemic, there was no anything and everything seemed possible. But the project itself started uh, properly in 2021 in terms of defining those metrics. We started the online course recording and build in 2021 during the summer. The course went live for learners in um, in autumn and winter 2021 with the face to face course and then with the skills training course or the online course and then the skills training course face to face. And then the efficacy of the training is now being examined using something called a global trigger tool, which identifies events in the hospital and how they've been managed post training or identifies in that ward that the training was conducted. So from the training program structure, you have the online course, which uses video examples um, of optimal practice and also shows evidence of the poor practice. So we're training our the people involved in the process. So consultants, doctors, allied health professionals and nurses, we're showing them what to do and we're showing them what not to do as dictated by this methodology. Once you complete the online training course and you achieve a benchmark score and a proficiency benchmark, which is a, um, a score derived from getting five experts to undertake the course, the mean of all of their attempts is the pass mark for the course. So the pass mark for this course was 93%. Once they pass the knowledge acquisition component, they graduate, so to speak, to face to face training and they can go into a ward based uh, huddle simulation and assessment program. The procedure characterization initially, and this is our first engagement with the project, we had to record footage inside the hospital and we had to record the footage inside the hospital during the pandemic and the hospital is not a an optimum clinical setting at the best of times. This is a ward 4B in Cork University Hospital. These are the people who are involved in the project. Uh, straight away, just at a glance, you can see reflective surfaces everywhere. This is where the health huddle is to take place on a day to day. We want to make the we want to record the real world practice because this is how we generate our steps that people need to complete. 
but we would be recording here and at any point or another a gurney a stretcher or cleaners anything can run through phones are ringing ambient noise everywhere it's not the ideal circumstances to be recording uh, anything to do with communication to an extent but that's where we recorded the footage which the experts reviewed to come up with the steps that we needed to train then after the fact so back to here again so that's procedure characterization they review a, they review a video which again the challenges were as it was in a busy clinical setting there was a lot of ambient noise there was no audio treatment we used two video angles that we synced together we put as many microphones on as many people as we could to try and get as much audio as possible without delving into it 32-bit audio is the savior of everything and if anyone wants to know more about that they can feel free to hunt me afterwards um we stress tested these metrics and definition all the way through to Delphi stage. So we have a group that was looking at them, interrogating them. We had a patient representative on the panel as well, who's looking at it from a patient safety and from the point of view of the patient and their family. When we captured the footage of the online course, we were still on lockdown. We were well, we're not on lockdown, but we had limitations as to how we could record this. And the initial plan was that for the online course, we would record an optimal huddle. We plan to do this in situ in during a quiet time in the ward. That was not a viable option. So we picked a clinical space in the assert center in UCC, which is a, a simulation center in UCC. Unfortunately, there it's a large room, no windows, um, a lot of reverb from the reflective surfaces. So audio wasn't great. And because it was mandated that there had if there was going to be eight people in the room for the recording, the air conditioning must be turned up to 11 in true uh, in true uh, in true rock and roll fashion so the audio was again a source of some concern and a lot it took us a lot to edit it to a point that we were content with to use it for training we also had challenges practical challenges we were recording a communication skill and everyone had to wear masks um they actually thought this was useful because unfortunately and i don't know if i need to bring it up here but it it's they don't foresee a point in the next few years where they won't be wearing masks in a clinical setting so they think this is authentic now and authentic for several years to come. We also had the challenge of finding a wide enough angle lens to capture the entire group while ever keeping everyone in frame and in focus. So we captured two minutes, they, Patrick. Two minutes. We captured they scripted a they scripted the entire procedure. Uh we recorded that and we used that as our primary training um resource. We annotated it with the additional content, marked it up with the metrics and the metric steps. We edited all this inside Final Cut Pro, which is Apple's video editor. In terms of building the online learning course, we used a WordPress-based learning management system, which was developed by Dave Hick. Um, he's called the platform LearnHub. It provides us with a lot of very detailed learning analytics, which is what we want. We want to be able to track each attempt. We want to be able to track each video view. We want that detailed XAPI-based um, LRS levels of learning analytics. When building the online learning course, we had to deploy Vimeo to some extent, but in the main, most of the videos are hosted on the platform itself. And as mentioned before, the benchmark was 93%. That's an indication of what we could track with it. I'm uh, moving through a little bit promptly now. So in terms of our challenges for the online course, the HSE have been hacked, and that was another thing that happened during the course of development of this course, which presented just another challenge. <laughs> um, we sometimes thought we were cursed. Um, so security uh, curtailments with the HSE meant that staff had issues on the HSE network accessing the course material because they don't let anything through the firewall anymore. There was also COVID-related staff shortages. There was a point at which I was turned around mid travel to court to record a procedure because there was a COVID outbreak on the ward. So we were dealing with the pandemic at all times. And it is a credit to the staff, the dedication of both the protect team who were involved in developing the course, but also the 60 and more um, nurses, allied health professionals, doctors and consultants in the ward that have undertaken the training so far that they found the time in their schedules with everything that was going on to undertake this training, which is Effectively, it's extra work for them. They're not getting any extra recognition for, but it shows their commitment to CPD, which is testimony to the great work that the health service are undertaking at the moment and those working in it. And on that note, I shall conclude things, folks.